Hey guys, it's Maddie. Welcome to my channel. I hope you guys had a great holiday. Today, I am going to be talking to you guys about the difference between service dogs, therapy dogs, and emotional support animals. So, sorry, this video is just kind of like random and just kind of like a sit down and talk video, but I did just get home from visiting family yesterday and I don't have time to go out and film something like more of my typical stuff because I only have one day to film, but I'm back in Ohio now, so it's time to get back to business and make more animal videos for all of you. Also, before we start, Thank you guys so much. Oh my god. I said I wanted to hit 15,000 by Christmas and we blew that out of the water, obviously. We are nearly at 22,000 now, which is 7,000 more than 15,000, which is what? What? I was not sure if we were gonna hit 15,000 and what the heck, guys, you guys are great. Thank you so much. That means the absolute world to me. Also, if you're new here and you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and click the subscribe button and become part of our family. I post animal videos every single week. For today's video, we're going to be talking about the difference between service dogs, therapy dogs, and emotional support animals. A lot of people don't know the difference, which is why it kind of gets foggy and a lot of people are misinformed about it. So today I'm just going to go over the basic differences between the three and then I'm going to tell you guys why I had a service dog and introduce you to my ex-service dog and current therapy dog, Brandy. So we will start with service dogs. Service dogs are essentially medical equipment to their handlers. They allow their disabled handlers to go out in public or do things that they typically wouldn't be able to do without them. So essentially they are considered medical equipment legally. So they are allowed to go everywhere that their handler goes that is a public area, basically. They are specially trained to do certain tasks to help with their handler's disability and they go through a lot of training before they're able to be a service dog. So it varies state by state, so I'm not going to get too much into the technicality of it but basically service dogs are only for disabled people. You cannot get a service dog if you just want to take your dog around in public or have them with you at all times because of just whatever reason you have. You need to have a disability to have a service dog and the dog needs to be specially trained to help you. Basically service dogs are medical equipment that enable people to be able to go out and live their life how a normal person would be able to live their life or as close to a normal person as they can be with the assistance of their service dog. There's a lot of different types of service dogs. There's medical alert dogs for like seizure alert, panic alert, low blood pressure, all kinds of stuff like that. And there's also mobility dogs, which is what most people think of when they think of service dogs, which is helping the blind or physically handicapped people get around. And then there's also psychological service dogs. So these are for things like PTSD, severe panic disorders, things like that. My dog personally is a psychological service dog. So she helped me with my panic disorder, which I will get into later. Service dogs are covered by the Americans with Disabilities Act, also called the ADA. So their public access rights are covered by the ADA. They are able to fly with their handlers, live with their handlers in no pet housing and in most cases they're able to also accompany their handlers to the hospital. Requirements for service dogs differ by state, but in general they typically have over 120 hours of training and passing the canine good citizen test and the public access test are also recommended. So that is the service dog. It is one dog assisting one person. One dog, one person, that's a service dog. Therapy dogs or therapy animals. It can be more than just dogs. They don't have public access rights. There is numerous organizations that they can get certified through. My dog Brandy is now a therapy dog and my cat Romeo is also a therapy cat. So they go to nursing homes and do reading programs. Most of the organizations that certify therapy animals will require the passing of the canine good citizen test for dogs or like a similar test for other animals. Most also recommend, if not require, some kind of formal type of obedience training or socialization. Therapy animals are extremely social with people. They are not trained to do any tasks for one person. It is one animal assisting the community. So as opposed to service dogs, which was one dog helping one handler, this is one animal assisting the community to make the community happier, basically. Therapy animals are typically used to alleviate stress and bring comfort to the community. Some situations where there would be therapy animals um, reading programs at the library to help children who struggle with reading or just really have a passion for reading and want to read to the animals. Also hospitals to lift spirits 
of families and also patients, nursing homes, and also after natural disasters. So therapy animals are really useful for the entire community, basically. And last is emotional support animals. Emotional support animals are not trained to assist you. They do not have public access rights, and they can be any kind of animal. You need a doctor's note saying that the emotional support animal would help you in some sort of way. Typically, it's to alleviate mental stress, or bring comfort to you as an individual. Like I said before, they don't have public access rights, so you can't take them into public with you, and they're not trained, so they just stay at your house and just do normal dog, cat, or animal type things to help you in your day-to-day -day life, just bringing comfort to you. They can live in no pet housing and also can accompany you on airplanes, and they are covered by the Fair Housing Act and the Air Carrier Access Act. So the emotional support animal is kind of like a service animal in a way that they only assist you, but they don't have public access rights and they're not trained, and typically their owners don't have severe enough disabilities to need a service animal to assist them in public, or they're able to go out in public without the assistance of a service animal. I'm also going to link down below a chart that kind of runs down what I went over, and it breaks down the differences between service animals, therapy animals, and emotional support animals. So all that information is below. I'm not gonna get into how you can get a service animal, what qualifies you for a service animal, anything like that, but I'm going to tell you why I had a service animal without rambling too much into my past. Here, I know there's a wall. Good, okay. This is my beautiful dog, Brandy. She is an eight-year-old mixed breed dog. She was a rescue. A lot of people say that you need to get dogs that you know their parents' temperament and they need to be specially bred to be service animals. But Brandy is a perfect example of why that doesn't need to be the case. You can get a rescue dog and as long as you know what you're doing, you can train them perfectly fine to be a wonderful assistance animal. So Brandy was my service dog. I trained her myself um, to assist me in public with my panic disorder. Um, I was diagnosed with anxiety when I was nine years old and medicated up until this past July which is very surprising that I was finally able to get off of medication. I never thought that would be possible. Um, and I also never thought it would be possible for me to be able to go into public and do things that I'm doing today, which I can do, which is why she is now a therapy animal and not a service dog. We went through a lot of training so she could help me. I used to not be able to go anywhere overnight. She, I had originally planned on training her, so I was able to go to college and attend public classes, which I wasn't able to do. Um, in high school, I had to leave high school in junior year because I wasn't able to go to school normally. <laughs> and my school was actually giving me a lot of problems about having a service dog that I didn't really want to fight and it was just easier for me to be homeschooled. I love you so much. She is a really good girl. She's also very camera shy, but she really honestly hates cameras so much. But yeah, that's Brandy. I will get into um, what she did for me and uh, how much she helped me and I'll let her go. Um, she's also wearing her service dog vest for the video. Can you stand? All right, stand. Good girl. Here's her service dog vest. A lot of people just try to bring dogs into public in general and they won't know that they're service animals unless they're marked, but it's not required that you mark them. All right, you can go, go on. That's a girl. I was diagnosed with anxiety and depression when I was nine years old, which is very young, and I was put on medication almost right away. Um, I was medicated my entire life up until like a few months ago. I might go back on something, but as of right now, surprisingly, I'm doing okay. Um, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm stable enough that I'm able to go places and do things normally. Having medication might come back in the future, but I'm not positive, but I did go through my entire life basically being on anxiety and depression medication. Um, when I was about like 12 years old, we went through a lot of mental testing and everything and trying a bunch of different medications, really realizing that a lot of them didn't help me or had like really awful side effects and so it was just really difficult for me. And then I talked to my doctor when I was 14 years old about how much my dog helped me just in general, alleviating symptoms of, you know, just the depression, the anxiety, and helping with panic attacks. And I said, would a service dog be good for me if I could train a couple of tasks for her to be able to assist me in public when I have an anxiety attack because I would shut down. Um, it was just, absolute chaos. It was so embarrassing for me to the point where I wouldn't want to go to school because I'd have panic attacks and it would just be absolutely like detrimental. I would have to go home and I ended up missing more than half of my sophomore year of high school. If I was able to have her with me, she would have been able to help me. I would have been able to pull through it, but unfortunately I didn't have her with me and I'd have to go home every single time. I also didn't have my first real sleepover <laughs> until I was 15 years old and it was actually at a dog camp. Um, about two hours from my house and it was a four-day event 
and I was able to bring Brandy with me. Obviously, it was a dog camp, so I was very excited. It was the first camp I could actually do that was overnight. She helped me a whole lot. I had a couple rough patches, and I was able to stay one night out of the four, which was absolutely amazing for me. I'm not going to get into when or why I got diagnosed with my final diagnosis, um, but basically, through a lot of training and everything, I found that Brandy was very helpful for me at the time. Now, as I've grown up, I've learned to cope more as myself, and getting out of school was definitely a huge step for me, and everything pretty much changed after I left high school, and I'm now able to function normally, and I can do a lot more than I was able to do before while I was in school, and just overall, I think I've grown up and kind of learned to level myself out more than I could before, so I feel like I don't need Brandy anymore as a service dog. So now, She's a therapy animal and she goes to nursing homes and um, does a reading program with children. So it's very, it's very fantastic, but that is basically why I had a service dog for my panic disorder. Um, in general, you should not ask people why they have service dogs. I actually got a pamphlet in the mail. Um, kind of not sure if it was meaning to be hateful or accusing me of be having a fake service animal, which is not obviously true. But in general, you should never... Um, falsely accuse people of having a fake service animal or ask people why they have a service animal because it can be rude. I don't get offended when people ask me why I have a service animal. I just say she's a psychological service dog for a panic disorder that I have that disabled me from going into public. So I just kind of leave it at that. But that is why I had Brandy. She was a huge help and I don't know, I would have literally probably not left my house without her. My first part of my teenage years, she made my life so much easier. But this was her final vest. Um, it just says service dog on it. I didn't really get around to doing too many patches because I didn't need her for much longer um, after getting this because I was homeschooled at that point and I didn't really go out too much. So yeah, <laughs> I didn't get around to putting on too many patches, but there's a lot of other patches you can put on their vest. Obviously you can put whatever you want. If you guys have any questions for me, I'm happy to answer any questions about service dogs, therapy dogs, or emotional support animals. At this point, I've done a lot of research. Um, obviously when I was getting into it, I did a whole bunch of research about all the requirements going into service animals, how to train them, what to do, and what tasks that would work best for me. So if you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them. Sorry this video was kind of boring. I know it's kind of a rambly video about, you know, me and I kind of hate talking about me, but it also talks about my wonderful dog and how she helped me. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys haven't already, go ahead and click the subscribe button and become part of our family. I post animal videos every single week. You can find me on all of my social media, which is in the description below. And I will see you guys next week and also next year. I hope you guys have a great new year and I will see you guys later. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Bye! Happy birthday, Merry Christmas to the one I call my missus. I'm leaving your love notes in the kitchen, say it all. I know you said to mind my business, but Cupid sent me on a mission. It's got me sitting, wishing, waiting for your call.